Okay, just to recap then from the very beginning. First of all, safety checks. Check that the scanner is clear, no permits to work, no notices saying that there is a man working aloft. Once the scanner has been checked, switch on the power. There will be a series of self-checks, but in order for you to make sure that you've set the radar up correctly, take everything down to zero. Once everything is on zero, then we are going to check the heading input, 051, and check the gyro, 051, 14.9 log speed, 14.9 on the radar. Turn off the trails, we didn't turn those off. Okay. Once everything is down to zero, make sure the brilliance is at the ambient uh, light conditions that you're working in, day or night. First thing we do is turn up the gain. The gain amplifies the returned echoes. Remember, the pulse goes out from the scanner, reflects back off the target, and it is weakened because of reflection, refraction, diffraction, absorption, and scattering. All those things will weaken or attenuate the signal. So we need to amplify it, we turn up the gain. We get a lightly speckled background. The lightly speckled background is due to internal noise, which is being amplified. That's too messy, so we then just want to take it. We're checking that the radar is working, that the gain is working, because it's amplifying the internal noise. Take it to a point where the gain or the speckles just disappear. We're now able to tune the radar. When we're tuning the radar, we are matching the received frequency with our transmitted frequency. We don't want anybody else's radar frequency coming into our scanner. We just want to filter out everything else except that which we have transmitted. It's a bar. As the tuning bar goes across, we get a green light. We can either use that to prove that we have optimum tuning, or we look at the display and we make sure that all the targets are coming through clear and bright. Now we have this spoking that's on the radar. This is caused, it's interference, um, it's radar interference from other vessels on a very similar frequency. Therefore, we click on interference rejection and that disappears. We've now set up the radar to use in ideal environmental conditions. Brilliance gain tune and interference rejection. That is what we need to do first with any radar, regardless of make, manufacturer, user options or weather conditions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a C clutter. The C clutter reduces the gain from around the ship to about six miles. Too much C clutter and the target, small targets will disappear. Not enough C clutter and the target is obscured. Bring it to a level where you have just a small amount of sea clutter displaying on the screen. You can see the target that is there on our starboard side. So the sea clutter is a function of the radar. It actually adjusts the gain, the amplification of those returned echoes. The rain clutter is a filtering process and that filters or cuts off the trailing edge of all targets on all ranges. You can see that it's disappeared quite clearly there. If there is no rain, don't apply rain clutter. If there's no sea, don't apply sea clutter. Okay. If I just put the range up a little bit, you can see that we actually have a rain squall ahead of us. And in that rain squall, there is a target which comes through quite clearly. So that's the environmental conditions. Auto clutter applies a set amount of clutter. That's good if it happens to be that amount that you require. If not, if you have no rain, you've applied rain clutter. If you have no sea, you've applied sea clutter. So it can be quite misleading 
always best practice do it manually. So we'll take that off. Okay. Now the radar is ready to set up to actually display how you as a user wants to display it. North up. North is at the top of the radar. The chart looks the same as the radar. Disadvantage, what you see out the window is not what you see on the radar. Course up. What you see out the window is what you see on either side of your heading line, but it does not relate to the chart. Course up, head up, uh, correction, course up, north up are both stabilized displays. They have a gyro input. Head up is an unstabilized display, which is where the radar will revert to if there is a gyro failure. Going back to north up there. We then have true motion, fixed motion, and relative motion. So this is the way our target, our own ship, and the targets move across the screen. In true motion, anything that is moving will move. Relative motion, we stay in the center, everything moves relative to us. Fixed motion is a relative display, but the trails are true. The trails, true motion will have true trails, relative motion will have relative trails. We then come to the vectors. The vectors are independent of the motion. So I can have true motion with relative vectors or true vectors, but there's no point in having true trails and true vectors because they will show the same information. So it's better to make sure that they are different. Relative information gives us CPA, TCPA, immediate visual appreciation of risk of collision. True trails or vectors give us an indication of how that vessel is moving and we can determine the aspect and therefore if it's crossing or overtaking or head on. The only other thing that we would need to mention is we have an EVL, we can acquire the targets. When we acquire the targets, we get numerical data coming down here. One minute for a trend, three minutes for all the information. You can also auto-acquire, but we'll talk about that when we use a little bit more with the radar. EBL, electronic bearing line, see the blue line there? We check the accuracy of that by lining it up with our heading, 051, 051. VRM, we check the accuracy of that by lining it up with a range ring, three miles, one, two, three miles. Whilst you're waiting for ARPA information to come through, always use your VRM and EBL to determine risk of collision. Steady bearing, approaching target. 